Hi students! Welcome back again to another episode of Learning. For today's video, pag-aaralan natin ang Forms of Confidence Interval Estimator for the Population Mean. That is, when the variance is known, when the variance is unknown, and when the central limit theorem is to be used. So, meron tayong gagamitin na mga formula, katulad ng mga ito. So, if the variance is known, we have the margin of error is equal to Z sub alpha over 2 times population standard deviation over square root of N. And for the interval estimate, we have uh, the sample mean plus and minus the margin of error. So, if the variance is unknown, gagamitin natin ang formula na ito. Papalitan lang natin yung Z sub alpha over 2 ng T sub alpha over 2 kama N minus 1 times the sample standard deviation over square root of N and for the interval estimate, pareho lamang siya. So, ang mga formula na ito ay magagamit lamang natin if the population is normally distributed. Ngayon, ano bang pinagkaiba ng dalawang formula na ito? So, we have, we have here Z at we have here T. So, kapag ka ang variance or standard deviation is known, gagamitin natin yung Z distribution. So, itong Z sub alpha over 2, ito yung uh, critical value. Habang ito namang T sub alpha over 2 kama n minus 1 is the T critical value. Ngayon, bakit siya may n minus 1? Kasi nga, ang T distribution ay nakadepende sa degrees of freedom. So, itong n minus 1 na ito, ito yung ating degrees of freedom. Samantala, yung alpha naman natin is the significance level. Ngayon, paano natin kukunin ang significance level kung ang given ay yung confidence level? You just subtract the confidence level from 1. Now, what if the population is not normally distributed? So, kapag hindi normally distributed ang ating population, dito na natin i-apply yung central limit theorem. So, the central limit theorem is to be used if n is at least 30. Kasi nga, uh, magagamit siya kung ang ating sample is sufficiently large. Dahil kung sufficiently large ang ating sample, uh, yung ating distribution ay mag approach ng normal distribution. Now, dito sa formula, wala namang pinagbago sila. If the variance is known, still we will use the Z distribution. If the variance is unknown or the, the standard deviation, we will still use the T distribution. So, yung Z at T distribution, magagamit natin siya rito sa ating uh, critical values. Okay? Habang ito namang sa standard error of the mean, ang gagamitin natin if the variance is known is the population standard deviation or population variance. Dito naman is the sample variance or the sample standard deviation. So, next, yung critical value natin is matatagpuan gamit ang mga tables na ito. So, we have the T-distribution critical values and we have the Z-table. So, dito sa Z-table, ang nilagay ko na lamang dito na confidence level ay yung most common. We have the 90, 95, 98, 99, and 99.9%. .9%. So, dito sa Z-table, yung confidence level matatagpuan natin dito sa baba. Samantala, yung alpha naman or the significance level matatagpuan natin dito sa taas. Let's have the first example. A sample of size 24 was taken from a normally distributed population. If the sample variance is 25 and the sample mean is 88, construct a 98% confidence interval for the population mean. Step 1, identify the given. So the sample variance is 25, ito yun. The sample size which is 24, ito yun. We have the confidence level, ito yung 98% confidence na it change na natin siya as decimal. And the sample mean which is equal to 88. Ngayon, paano natin kukunin yung alpha? So, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, so the significance level alpha is equal to 1 minus 0.98, the confidence level. So, we have alpha is equal to 0.02. Ngayon, ang ating population ay normally distributed naman. So, Dahil unknown yung population standard deviation or population variance, gagamitin natin yung critical value ng T distribution. So, we have E is equal to T sub alpha over 2, comma N minus 1 times S over square root of N, which is equal to T uh, sub 0.02, ito yung ating alpha, over 2, 
comma 23 dahil ang ating sample size ay 24 so we have here the degrees of freedom and 0.02 over 2 is equal to 0.01 so hahanapin natin siya rito ito yung 0.01 and then ito yung degrees of freedom natin 23 saan sila nagtagpo we have 2.5 so kung nalilito kayo dito sa 0.02 over 2 pwede nyo namang kunin yung confidence level tingin kayo sa baba 98% ito siya okay kung saan nag intersect yung uh, Degrees of freedom at saka yung confidence level or yung alpha. Okay, kung itong uh, gagamitin ninyo, yun ang kanyang critical value. So, the critical value is 2.5 or 2.500. And then, itimes lang natin siya dito sa standard error of the mean. We have square root of 25. Bakit nagkaroon tayo na square root of 25? Dahil ang given natin ay sample variance. So, ang kailangan kasi natin dito is the sample standard deviation. So, kukunin mo lang yung square root of 25. That is already the sample standard deviation over square root of 24 is approximately equal to 2.5516. So, itong margin of error depende sa inyong teacher kung anong decimal place ang kailangan. So, ang akin nilagay lang dito is 4 decimal places para medyo accurate siya. And then for the third step, we have to construct the interval estimate given the sample mean which is equal to 88 and the margin of error which is equal to 2.5516. So, the interval estimate is equal to uh, the sample mean plus and minus the margin of error. So, we have 88 plus and minus 2.5516 is equal to bakit tayo nagkaroon ng ganito. Okay? So, we have 88 minus 2.5516 and 88 plus 2.5516. Ito yung ating endpoints ng uh, interval. So, 88 minus 2.5516 is 85.4484 and 88 plus 2.5516 is 90.5516. Ano ibig sabihin ng confidence interval estimate na ito? So, this means that the population mean lies between this interval. So, this is the answer. Example number 2. A random sample of 31 was taken to estimate the population mean. The mean and standard deviation of the samples are 50 and 5.2 respectively. Determine the 99% confidence interval estimate of the population mean. Step 1, identify the given. So the sample standard deviation is 5.2, ito yon. The sample size is 31, ito yon. The confidence level is 0.99, ito yung 99% confidence interval, and we have the sample mean which is equal to 50. So, kung mapapansin nyo sa ating problem, walang sinabi dyan na ang population ay normally distributed. Pero gamit ang central limit theorem, the sample which is at least 30, okay, so dahil 31 ang kinuha natin na sample which is at least 30, sabi natin na ang distribution ay Ah, mag approach ng normally distributed. So, yun na sinasabi sa central limit theorem. Pero, gagamitin pa rin natin dito yung uh, critical value ng t-distribution dahil ang population variance or standard deviation is unknown. So, to solve for the margin of error, we have e is equal to t sub a or alpha over 2, comma n minus 1 times s over square root of n. So, by substitution, we have t sub 0.01 sana ko itong 0.01 na i-minus lang yung confidence level sa 1 over 2 comma 30 so this is 31 minus 1 times 5.2 which is the sample standard deviation over square root of 31 the sample size so alamin muna natin yung critical value natin so 0.01 divided by 2 is uh, 0.005 ito yon and the uh, Degrees of freedom is 30, saan sila nag-intersect dito sa 2.750. Or kung nalilito kayo rito, katulad ng ginawa ko nung una, uh, tingnan lamang yung confidence level which is 99%. Pwedeng itong degrees of freedom at confidence level ang gamitin nyo, pareho lang yan. Okay, so 2.750 ang critical value. Ita times natin sa 5.2 over square root of 31 which is approximately equal to 2.5684. And then for the last step, you have to construct the interval estimate given the sample mean of 50 and the margin of error of 2.5684. So we have x plus and minus e is equal to 
uh, 50 plus and minus 2.5684 is equal to 50 minus 2.5684 comma 50 plus 2.5684 is equal to 47.4316 comma 52.568. Ibig sabihin, ang population mean ay nasa pagitan ng 47.4316 and 52.5684. Example number 3. The average weight in pounds of newborn babies in a public hospital is normally distributed with a standard deviation of 2.9. If a random sample of 65 babies with a mean weight of 6.3 pounds was used to estimate the population mean, construct the 95% confidence interval estimate of the mean weight of the newborn babies. Step 1, identify the given. We have the population variance which is 2.9, ito yun. We have the sample size which is equal to 65, ito yun. We have the confidence level 0 0.95, ito yung 95%. And the sample mean which is equal to 6.3, ito yun. Since ang ating uh, population ay normally distributed and the population standard deviation is known, so ang gagamitin natin ay critical value ng Z distribution. So we have E is equal to Z sub alpha over 2 times uh, population standard deviation over square root of n which is equal to z sub 0 0.05 over 2 sa nakuha 0 0.05 so we have to subtract 0 0.95 from 1 and then ita times natin sa 2.9 over square root of 65 so dito sa ating table ang ating uh, critical value is 1.96 so, 1.96 times 2.9 over square root of 65 is approximately equal to 0 0.7050. Next, for the last step, construct the interval estimate. So, we have the sample mean which is 6.3 and the margin of error which is equal to 0 0.7050. So, the interval estimate is equal to x bar plus and minus e. So, is equal to 6.3 plus and minus 0 0.7050. Then we have 6.3 minus uh, 0.7050, 6.3 plus 0.7050 is equal to 5.5950, 7.0005. So this means that the mean weight or the average weight of all the newborn babies in the hospital lies between 5.5950 pounds and 7.0005 pounds. Example number 4. A random sample of 28 people was used to estimate the average time spent weekly in the gym by its visitors. The mean of the samples is 5.3 hours with a standard deviation of 1.6. If the time spent of all the gym visitors is normally distributed, construct the 98% confidence interval estimate of the population mean. Step 1, identify the given. So, ang given natin dito is the sample standard deviation which is 1.6. Ito yun. N is equal to 28. Ito yun, the sample size. The confidence level which is 98%. So, we have 0 0.98. And the sample mean which is 5.3. Okay, since ang ating population naman ay normally distributed, so nakalagay siya sa ating problem. And the sample standard deviation is known. Okay, so ang gagamitin natin is critical value ng T distribution. Ito yon. So, the margin of error is equal to T sub alpha over 2 comma n minus 1 times S over square root of n is equal to T sub 0 0.02 over 2 comma 27. So, yung 0 0.02 na i-minus lang yung 0.98 sa 1 para makuha yung alpha natin. And then, over 2 comma 27, this is 28 minus 1. Okay, times 1.6 over square root of 28. So, kunin muna natin ang critical value. So, uh, 0 0.02 over 2 is 0 0.01 and then 27 ang degrees of freedom. Ito yun. So, nag-intersect sila sa 2.473 or pwede mo namang gamitin yung uh, degrees of freedom and the confidence level which is 98%. So, pareho lang ating makukuha which is 2.473 and then it times mo siya sa 1.6 over square root of 28. It is approximately equal to 0 0.7478. And then for the last step, construct the interval estimate given the sample mean of 5.3 and the margin of error 
0.7478. So, the interval estimate is equal to x bar plus and minus e is equal to 5.3 plus and minus 0.7478. Then we have 5.3 minus 0.7478 comma 5.3 plus 0.7478. So we have 4.5522 comma 6.0478. So this means that the average time spent, okay, weekly in the gym by its visitors lies between 4.5522 hours and 6.0478 hours. So ito yung ating uh, estimate ng population mean. Example number 5. The average quantity of hemoglobin in the bloodstream of men is normally distributed with a standard deviation of 2.3 gram per deciliter. A random sample of 50 men with an average blood hemoglobin of 14 gram per deciliter was taken to estimate the population mean. Determine the 99% confidence interval estimate of the population mean. Step 1, identify the given. So we have the population standard deviation which is 2.3, ito yon. The sample size which is equal to 50. The confidence level which is equal to 99% or 0 0.99. And the sample mean is equal to 14. So ang atin namang given dito is uh, a normally distributed data and given din yung ating population standard deviation. So, ibig sabihin, gagamitin natin ang critical value ng Z distribution. So, E is equal to Z sub alpha over 2 times uh, population standard deviation over square root of N. So, is equal to Z sub 0 0.01 over 2. So, itong 0.99 na i-minus sa 1, kaya nakuha natin yung significance level na 0 0.01 over 2 times 2.3 over square root of 50. So, kunin muna natin ang critical value na ito with 99% confidence level and we have the 0 0.005 na alpha over 2 kasi ito yung uh, value ng 0 0.01 over 2. So, we have 2.58 as the critical value times 2.3 over square root of 50 is approximately equal to 0 0.8392. And then, the last step, we have to construct the interval estimate given the sample mean of 14 and the margin of error which is 0 0.8392. So, interval estimate is equal to x bar plus and minus e is equal to 14 plus and minus 0 0.8392. Then we have 14 minus 0 0.8392 comma 14 plus 0 0.8392 is equal to 13.1608 comma 14.8392. So ito yung ating endpoints ng uh, interval, ng ating interval estimate. So this means that the average quantity of hemoglobin in the bloodstream of men is between 13.1608 and 14.8392 gram per deciliter. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you learn a lot. Goodbye!